Welcome back. In the previous video, we pretty much finished our code. Now I'm going to step through the playing of it with you. First of all, let's go into population. Now it's set at this time to be 50 bunnies. Trial time is 10. Time scale is one. So it's going to run basically in real time, which is okay for the first few times. Trial time, you'll notice that after 10 seconds, they do not get very far around the maze. And Later you'll want to run them for longer, but let's just have a look in real time how this is going to go. Okay, so you can see them in the corners and some of them are starting to move out because they ended up with some very nice random angles. When we get to the restart time, which just happened then, so you can see your stats sitting up in the top of your game window. When it gets to 10, they're all going to be destroyed and bred again. And when this happens, you will find that you'll get fitter populations starting to come out. You'll get more of them exploring their way around. Now, how do you know this is actually working besides these sort of visual cues? If we pause for a minute, remember our script that prints out what's happening. If we have a look down in here, we've got three generations. The first generation, we had the highest guy picked up 11 eggs. Then we had 966 six, and out to here. The next second generation, there was eight. Now, it, it's not going to go higher and higher and higher and higher. It will sort of oscillate back and forward, but generally it will start getting higher and higher and higher. Okay, so this is when you actually need to let them have a bit more of a run around the environment to see those values increase. So if we go to our population and say set our, actually I don't think the population size needs to be changed, but let's give them like, you know, 60 seconds to have a good search around and then change the time scale to something like 10, which will be very fast. And then press play. It will speed everything up and it'll allow you to go through more generations and you can actually watch them up here you might just want to set this to play and go off and get a coffee or something because these things do take a while for it to train now immediately just given the longer time that i've said if you have a look down in the data that's coming out of this you can see initially there was a you know a few bunnies that found eggs and as we've gone on see more and more bunnies in that list are getting eggs well up to here anyway and you can see that you've kind of gone a little bit backwards um, but we're still sticking around the 26 or so value and some of them are just getting one again in this case it will be all about giving them an awful lot more time to explore the maze because one bunny cannot seriously get around this whole maze in even 60 seconds so you might want to like ramp that up to like you know a thousand seconds or something and then just run it really really fast to see these values changing but what you are going to find is that they're going to slowly start to creep up to a point based on how well you've designed this and how much time you've got, that it's going to sort of just peter out to sort of an equilibrium value where it's just not going to get any better. And there, you can just say at that point, well, you've trained it best you can, and therefore your top bunnies are going to have some of the best strategies for getting around that maze in a quick amount of time and picking up all of those eggs. Okay, at this point, you can start thinking about, well, what else could Zombunny use to make a decision on the turning around and which way to turn? He could consider if there's anything to either side of him. Okay, so if he's run into a dead end and there's a block on his left, then it makes more sense if he turns around to his right, doesn't it? But currently, he's got no idea about that because he can't sense it. So we'll add that into our code. Let's go into our DNA and just change the structure of our dictionary that we've got. And up the top, we're going to have a combined key. And this combined key is going to have three bool values. It's going to have a left, is there something to the left? Bull forward. Is there something in front? And then bull right. Like that. Okay, now with that change, you're going to find you've got 
all sorts of errors going on throughout here but that's okay because we've got to update it so creating our dictionary is now got our combined key which looks like that let's copy that and change it there for that dictionary and we'll come back to our genes in a minute I just want to check these other things in here okay so that's okay now let's uh, go into our set random so in this case we now have more than two uh, chromosomes I guess they're called in the gene okay it's going to be longer how much longer is it going to be well this first one we could could say that it's if there's nothing on the left so false nothing in front and nothing to the right false then we're going to do this if there is nothing to the left nothing in front and something on the right then we're going to do that so we need to create enough length in these genes for each possible combination of false and trues within this three part key so I'm going to give this as a challenge for you. The actual value here is going to stay the same. It's going to be a random range that you're giving it initially, but you've got to come up with all the different combinations of these. So pause the video now, give it a go, and when I come back, I'll put those in for you. Okay, how did you go with that? Well, I'm just going to paste these in here. Yes, I know that people don't like when I just paste things in, but I'm not going to type all that out, and surely you don't want to watch me do that so you can pause the video and type these out but there's going to be one two three four five six seven eight values and the way that you can work that out is that it's going to be two so you've got true and false two values two to the power of three so two values in a sequence of three two to the power of three that's a good way to know if you've picked them all up okay so now moving down to fix the rest of our code We've got our key value pair here and our for each. Now that needs to be, this is the key. Let me grab that, put that down there. And we want to put it over here when we're creating our new genes. Then we want to change that just there as well. And that should fix all of our issues. Let's bring this down so you can see that on a different line. And then we've got this get gene. Now get gene is happening back in the brain. It's going to need to pass through something that looks like that. And then the something that looks like that, which we would call here C wall, will in fact go into here. So we've got a combined key that we're passing through and we'll use it there. Okay, so save that. Now let's go back into brain and update brain for this. So seawall is down here. Now remember seawall is just a true at this point. We need to make it into a combined key. So at the top here, I'm going to first of all go to seawall and declare it to be that. Okay, so our combined key. And then down in here, we won't set it just yet, or actually we can set it. We can set it to false, false, false. False, false, false. We don't see any walls anywhere at all. And then we can create some other values. So if we had a bool left equals false, bool front equals false, and bool right equals false. We can then, this is the front, okay? So I'll we'll put front in there to pick that value up. And then we have to perform these ray casts for the right and the left values as well. Let me just make this screen a little bit bigger for you. And let's so grab the if statement. I'm going to grab that and we're going to put it down here and down here now the can move we're only interested in moving forward that's just stopping us getting pushed forward we can get rid of that one and just have a single one get rid of that one down there so this will be instead of a forward it will be a right looking 
raycast or sphercast I should say this will then be right equals true if we've actually hit something and then this will be right or left but it'll be negative right which is left and then the, this left here can be equal to true then after we've set all those we can go C wall equals brackets left front right like that so we're actually setting it and then we're passing it through down here that's our combined key okay so we've got all of that done let's save it and we can actually try it out so back into unity and let's press play and now we can watch our populations now if you want to see how they're progressing we can actually go into the console and then check out these values that are being given here for each generation again you might actually want to increase the amount of time that you're giving them I can't remember what I've got mine set to oh 60 okay if you have a look now at these generations you can actually see that these uh, number of bunnies are actually getting to the eggs are uh, getting well got longer up here and shrunk back a little bit there and then shrunk back a little bit there but what you're really hoping for is that the bunny that ended up with the most eggs after the same number of trials that you had before is going to in fact have picked up more but you know what I'll let you run that and discover it if we've actually improved it or not by adding in that extra code but what I did want to show you with that extra code is just the facts that you can put more of a combined key so more inputs in there that define the state that the bunny finds himself in and then what the response to those states are okay and that's pretty much it that's a whirlwind in a nutshell introduction to genetic algorithms and of course there's so many different things you can do with genetic algorithms if you're interested to keep up to date with what I'm doing please visit the holistic 3d learning website and sign up to the newsletter where you will find out if I have some more machine learning technique videos coming up or stay tuned on YouTube if you'd like to support our work like us on YouTube visit our website holistic3d.com look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.